you about the uh, a certain amount of protection, or at least not discouragement by the county, of the existing dirt roads where the residents on the dirt roads or those who are property owners on the dirt roads desire to keep the atmosphere, the ambiance, the natural beauty of the dirt roads. I think that feeds into tourism, it feeds into natural resources. I think Florida has had a great success with its Canopy Roads program. Mm -hmm. And we can have a Canopy Roads program here. Mm -hmm. And it can be advertised just like Florida advertises this on, on its uh, tourism channels and so forth. Uh, but I think at the moment, there, well, for the past 25 years, there has not been the healthiest attitude by the county against the uh, people who want to maintain dirt roads. There has been an attitude of let's pave everything and let's pave it in an outrageous way with these wide swaths of 80 foot right of way. That brings me to my second request that there be an issue that the county consider paving roads in a different way. The way Virginia paves its roads, rural roads. The way North Carolina paves its rural roads. That is, pave what's there with a ditch on the side without these large grassy swales that result in the destruction of 80 feet of trees on either side of the right of way, which gives something else that has to be maintained and mowed. Uh, the, the rejoinder that you have historically heard to that is, oh, well, we have to pave them that way to get the federal matching money or state matching money, and we, we can't afford, we don't want to lose all that matching money. Well, if you did it the easier, simpler, more natural way, you wouldn't need the extra money, and that would have been my part of the conversation back. So this feeds into cultural resources and natural resources and tourism, I think. But, uh, it is an issue whether we can have continued maintenance of dirt roads and whether roads that are ultimately paved can be paved in a different manner a less intrusive, more environmentally sensitive matter. So I would like to put that on there. And, and then the creation of the canopy road mm -hmm. uh, or an acknowledgement of some kind of program to encourage canopy roads feeds into that, I think, naturally. Mm -hmm. So maybe the canopy roads would come under natural resources and uh, uh, paving in a different way to preserve the existing uh, community um, natural resource. form yeah. would be the smaller quality of life. Yeah. It's it's quality quality of life. It could be in transportation too yeah. when we think yeah. about yeah. our it's infrastructure. Really yeah, yeah. But I, I think both of them fit well. Under, so sometimes I've heard that it's called contact sensitive. Yeah. Oh. Now a canopy road program um, is a lot of times also combined with historic um, stories. You know, of, of those canopy roads because typically they're fairly old. Um, so yeah, I mean it fits. It fits there. I, I got it written down. We'll, we'll put it in there. Um, so we'll definitely do that. Um, so before we move on, Matt and Jason, I defer to you on this. Um, I think we need to move to meet and have workshops a little bit more often than once a month if we want to. <laughs> that we want to accomplish this, and, and I really like the depth of the input, you know, that we're getting because I mean, and that's that's what makes the quality of the comp plan is is the input from staff and affected parties and residents and citizens. And the more, the better, you know. But this is interactive, and I'm not writing your comp plan. You're giving us the input that we're putting in because this is your plan, the plan you need to live with. No, it's not my plan, and uh, I just don't want it to just put it on the shelf or put it on the, under the next desk. But um, so this this is your plan, and so we need to look with it, and that's why we need as much input as we can. Um, so in terms of, do you want to set another workshop in two weeks, and if so, what day and what time works for you? You know, I mean, I see a lot of yawning faces. <laughs> Uh, so six to eight might be a little late. Maybe we can do five to seven. 
Um, you know, we can also have it next door, or I'm sure we can talk to City of Valdosta, have it in the multi-purpose room, so we can all sit around at the table and actually have something to write on, uh, where we can where we can write. Matt, would that be a possibility? Yeah, as long as we can get the room reserved. I'd yeah, I mean, if not, we can also have yeah. it in our conference room. You know, it's not as nice, but... <laughs> well, I mean, we've got a large room, but it's... Sometimes yeah. used in the evenings. Yeah. So what's what's uh, everybody's input here? N well, the next from regularly scheduled meeting was the twenty first of that March. Was, of March, but that was the the next regularly scheduled meeting until we got a sense of the comments and the pace. All right, which is four weeks from tonight. Two weeks is March the seventh, which will be again. Monday night. Why are we here tonight? Is the Planning Commission had a work session tonight, so it naturally fit in with our work schedules and some of the Planning Commissioners' attendance. Yes. It's not sacred. I'm Six not to eight is not that. sacred, but it's no. just something that fit in with our natural planning meetings. And it gave everyone after hours opportunity because I do feel like from a citizen standpoint, if right. we do it during the day, sometimes that can actually have a negative impact on public input. Right. And we can do it at 5.30 to 7.30, but you can see, I mean, two hours, and we usually cap it at two hours, because, you know, that's as long as we can stand. <laughs> no, and it's, going through the comp plan, I mean, it's tedious, you know, and it's, it's a government document that we did 10 years ago, and we have to update it. You know, so so it is tedious, and it's not always fun. Could we and, consider you know, a different day of the week, maybe we, two, Tuesday yeah, evening? Uh, yeah. You know, just because maybe people have different work schedules and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, and what we usually do is at each meeting we'll set the date for the next one. You know, so it's and and we can leave the one on the twenty second, but we can put one in between, and and we'll mail it out. I mean, you'll get emails from us. And, uh, you know, in a couple days, you'll get an email from us, so make sure you're all signed up with the revisions, uh, with the proposed revisions, so they're not cast in stone, you know, may have heard something wrong, or, you know, we can still finish everything around. So, so are we talking about the 8th? The we're eighth talking about a, it's a county commission meeting, but, I mean, I could just be the 8th. I mean, so, that's a county commission meeting. And yeah. city council work session also for so that, Austin. So that, that's really not good. But what about March the first, which is isn't that two weeks from now? That's two weeks. Uh, no, no, that's next so week. It's next week. Oh, that's next week. That's Never mind. How about, how about the tenth? How was that? <clears throat> Again, it's not bad. It's just Matt and I would be late. I yeah, mean, that I'm week the only good night is Monday night. Monday night. Yeah, Monday, Monday, Monday the 7th. works for us. That's if Monday night is good. How about if that late earlier in the evening? Like yeah, five I think a little earlier. Um, how does 5 o'clock work? How does 5 o'clock work for everybody? Okay. Well, let's, let's then plan on March the 7th at 5 o'clock. And we'll either have it in the Valdosta multipurpose room or possibly in our conference room. I mean, you can That's one of his uh, preservation needs, isn't it? First Monday. And uh, so, so watch your email. We'll, we'll tell you exactly what location it is. And look at the attachment also because you will have the revised, uh, you will have the revised version. And what we will also do, the only thing that we revised so far are these three or four pages. For next meeting, we will bring also hard copies, not of the entire document, but of, of the three or four pages where we've made revisions. And if anybody wants a copy of the community vision plan, please email us, and we will email you a copy of that. So you can have it for your own use, or email Matt, uh, and we will also bring some additional copies to the next meeting. And Julia Brown will not be able to have it in the multi-purpose room on the 7th. Okay. That should just remind me that's our Historic Preservation Commission meeting at 5.30. Okay. So, SGRC conference room. SGRC conference room on the 7th. Uh, so, just next door? Yes. <laughs> at 5 o'clock. All right. Well, thank you all. Thank you very much, everyone. Very much. Thank you.